the demo scene. This is where programmers pick a platform, and then they try their best to show off their programming skills. They attempt to make these old computers do things that even their designers never dreamed of. Back in the 80s, a lot of it stemmed from arguments over which computer was more capable, you know, Atari vs Commodore, or Amiga vs IBM PC, or whatever. Today, it's more of an exercise in making the best use of limited hardware. The Commodore 64 is still at the heart of the demo scene today, along with the Amiga and a few others. And while it's hard to pinpoint the exact time that the demo scene became a thing, it is possible to pinpoint the first ever demo for the Commodore 64, and for that you have to go all the way back to 1982. And that's the Commodore 64 Christmas demo. So to help you get in the Christmas spirit, let's load it up and have a look. Looking on the directory of the disk, there are four files, including Christmas Music, Christmas Code, and Christmas Root. Let's load the first file on the disk, which was commonly done on the C64 by loading asterisk. Now, if you list the program, it appears to be written in BASIC. Uh, in the REM statements, you can see that this was uh, coded by three guys, uh, Wayne Eastwood, uh, Hrex Boucher, and Stephen Murray. I haven't been able to find out much about these guys other than they worked at Commodore in the early 1980s. I bet they would have never guessed people would be examining this code 36 years later. Moving on, if you list the program in its entirety, you'll see that it isn't very long at all. In fact, the last part of the code simply loads in the other three programs into RAM. After doing a bit of poking around, I discovered that the file Christmas Code uh, gets loaded into this upper memory area here, and then Christmas Root gets loaded into the first bit of available RAM, and then finally Christmas Music appears to take up the majority of the computer's RAM here. So let's have a look at the demo. We start off with some sound of wind and some falling snow. Believe it or not, this isn't even graphics, it's all text. Those are periods <laughs> falling down the screen, and at the bottom is some of the built-in character set graphics. However, that Commodore logo is a double wide sprite. Seasons Greetings from Commodore. Moving along, uh, we get this little village scene going on here with the snow falling. Again, this is all text characters, no graphics are used at all on this scene. So, was this impressive? Well, yes, in 1982 it was. Uh, keep in mind that the Commodore 64 had only been released a few months before this demo came out, and so uh, much of its capabilities had yet to be exploited. And uh, even though this is text characters, most customers walking into the stores seeing this really didn't know that. And uh, considering what most other computers had for graphics at the time, it actually looked fairly impressive. Okay, so uh, on the next scene we get a Christmas tree and jingle bells. Also composed mostly of text characters, and a sprite for the top and the flashing lights. In the next scene, we get this calming candle burning while we listen to Silent Night. Again, all text characters except for the flame itself, which is an animated sprite. And next, we get Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And they're using a sprite for Santa's sleigh, although I really thought there should be more reindeer pulling it. Uh, so even though the graphics on these scenes was not revolutionary, uh, this was one of the first programs to show off the SID chip for making music. They are only using a fraction of what the SID chip is capable of doing, but in 1982, this actually sounded really amazing. No other computer on the market could produce multi-channel sound like this. The Atari computers could come close, but lack the ability to produce different waveforms. One written account from Bob Russell is that there was no radio reception in the building, so they programmed Christmas music on the development versions of the C64 to give them something to listen to during the holidays in 1981. It's possible that music found its way into this demo. Next, we get to see and hear Frosty the Snowman. They have several different sprites going here, and uh, these kids certainly look very happy. <laughs> Even Frosty has to dance a bit. And now we get to a little advertisement for the Commodore 64. Uh, this music is Invention 13 from Bach, and it was used in a lot of Commodore's early advertising. 
It's uh, surprising that they thought the CPM option was going to be a big seller. And look, only $595, which was actually a good deal at the time. You can hear the same tune being used in many of the early Commodore 64 commercials. In January 1982, the Commodore 64 personal computer was introduced with a 64K built-in memory. However, uh, years later they switched to this more upbeat song, for better or worse. <laughs> Taking a look at the December 1982 issue of Commodore Magazine, you can see the different screens from the Christmas demo over to the left of the table of contents. However, I noticed that two of the screenshots shown here are different from the final version. On the next page, you can see a special Christmas message from the staff. Again, there are two pictures shown here that are not seen in the actual demo itself. It makes me wonder what happened. There's a message down below saying Christmas screens for Commodore 64 done completely with character graphics and sprites. Pop over to your nearest Commodore dealer to see the screens live with music as part of the great Commodore Christmas celebration. Why don't we take a closer look at these character graphics? Uh, through the miracle of emulators I can actually save the screen memory to a file on disk and then I can actually load that right back into my own program PetDraw. And now I can play around with the character graphics that they've created. So, for example, if I wanted to see what uh, this particular character was, I can take a look at it. And while these character graphics don't look too bad, I should point out that some very talented people are able to create character graphics that are really amazing. I mean, look at some of these. You'd think for sure these can't be just text characters, but they are. The Christmas demo was distributed by Commodore on floppy disk, and in Europe it was distributed with the computer as part of a demo cassette called The Very First, with the Christmas demo being on side B. It was also distributed with the SX64, uh, with a few minor changes to the text, so now it says Executive 64, uh, plus they removed the price at the bottom of the list of features. I suppose $995 wasn't as impressive sounding. <laughs> Of course, this wasn't the last Christmas demo for the Commodore 64. Uh, many Christmas demos followed in the years after, mostly made by other enthusiasts. Some of these Christmas demos followed the same format of character graphics with Christmas music, uh, such as this one which came out in 1987. This one feels very much in the spirit of the original Christmas demo, but I think the graphics are somewhat less well made, but uh, making good text-based graphics is definitely a skill that few people have. A few others took this further with nicely drawn bitmap graphics displays such as the John Henry demo. And uh, this one has a bunch of songs and I really like some of the artwork in these. My only complaint is that all of the voices in all of the songs appear to be using the triangle waveform only, so it really doesn't take advantage of the SID chip at all. Interestingly enough, my favorite of the other demos is this one by Waveform in 1984. It depicts a village in the valley between some mountains and the snow is created with individual pixels. It plays through several songs and has a few different backdrops as well. Obviously, I was curious if similar demos existed on other computer platforms. I did a lot of digging and asking around and I found several short demos on many platforms such as ones like this on the Amiga. But the only demos I could find similar to the original Commodore Christmas demo would be this one on the Atari 8-bit line. It has several songs it cycles through, and each one has a bitmap graphic to look at. However, the pokey sound chip in the Atari is not well suited for this type of music. Interestingly enough, the Atari ST had a similar demo. Uh, however, it's hard to compare this one because it isn't actually using the FM sound chip in the Atari ST. Instead, it's outputting this as MIDI, and uh, you would have needed to have an external MIDI synthesizer of some kind. So while it's cool, and it sounds really good, I consider it a bit cheating. So for me, the Commodore Christmas demo holds a special place in history for me for several reasons. One, because it was what I saw these machines running uh, when they were being demonstrated in department stores, particularly during the Christmas season, for several years during the early 1980s. Also, because Commodore was, at least for my household, an important part of Christmas in the first place because there was always some sort of Commodore computer or peripheral or game at the top of our Christmas list. And so, my brother and I always looked forward to opening our presents on Christmas morning and seeing what Commodore gifts uh, we would received. But um, I also think this demo is important because it may very well be the first graphics and sound demo of any sort for the Commodore 64. 
So I encourage you this Christmas to break out your Commodore 64 and connect it to the living room television for those Christmas parties and let the Commodore Christmas demo run to help set the mood. Uh, just don't have the volume up too loud as some of your guests may not be able to appreciate Sid music as much as you do. And so that about wraps it up. And since this is the last time you'll be seeing me uh, before Christmas, I'll take this opportunity to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and stick around because I do have more stuff coming, of course. Uh, so thanks for watching.